Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Moon Fellowship of Jesus Christ. Today's word. Before we begin, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this time. Thank you for this word today. We pray that you uh, that you touch everyone this morning and continue to bless this service. Continue to anoint me with this word as I give it to your flock. This, um, Anoint me, let me speak the words you want me to speak, and empty me this vessel of mine. I pray for your guidance, and bless us all today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, our word for the day. Our, op our opening verse. Our opening verse comes from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 to 7. And it says, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing, amen? Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, Get understanding. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Today's sermon is called Wisdom and Understanding. Amen. Amen. Get wisdom. Get understanding. You know, this verse was talking about wisdom is the principal thing. You know, and I truly believe that in my heart that we can never get through this journey unless we have wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the Lord. That is the difference between us who follow Christ and those who don't. They do, do not understand. They do not have the wisdom. So today, I hope we all get this wisdom and understanding because, you know, the word tells us to have faith and love and belief, but all of those we do need to have. But to truly know how to walk in this life, we definitely need wisdom and understanding. Amen. Amen. So the word tells us that we need to get wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. But why? Why do we need it? Should there, everybody here has a reason why or they don't think they need it. But we know that Solomon truly tells us these things. In Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 to 27, he says, Hear, my children, the instructions of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he taught me, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands and live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Amen. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Amen. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head the ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She will deliver you. Amen. Hear, my sons and daughters, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the ways of wisdom, I have led you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. And when you run, you will not stumble. Amen. These are the reasons why we truly do need wisdom. We know in our Christian walk, we, we stumble. Amen. We fall. We have trials. We have tribulations. We have pains. We have suffering. But to know wisdom and to know understanding is to know that God is with us, as we've been sharing this morning. 
He is with us. He will guide us. It's he who gives us the wisdom. The word tells us to ask, and it will be given to us. And I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's all the Lord, so it's okay. When we walk and we step, you know, we know that this world is a cruel, dark place right now, for sure. And it seems to be getting darker and crueler and bad by the minute. But this is truly why we need to continue to have God's wisdom and his knowledge and his understanding. Because they are the key to getting through this life and getting through our walk with him. It says, take firm hold of instructions and do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of wickedness and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. You know, the thing Solomon truly always told us, the things that we should do and what we shouldn't do. He showed us the way to go. He was the wisest of them all. And I'm sure he experienced all of these things for him to be able to write about them. But these are truly words for our own learning. We know that deceiver is out there. And we know that the devil rolls around like a roaring lion seeing who can be, he can devour. His whole quest in his life is to keep the Christians and the followers of Jesus Christ from staying with Jesus Christ. Staying hold of him, staying firmly grasping him, looking upon him, being with him. His quest is to truly take us away. But these words are saying, recognize it. Get away from them. Do not associate with those who do not follow the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we can know who those are. Those that try to keep us from following the Lord. Turn away from them and pass on. Avoid them. It says, for they do not sleep unless they have done evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. This is the world we live in. The world that's truly constantly trying to get people to fall. Evil never sleeps. Amen. It never. It never sleeps. Matter of fact, during the night is when the worst time that evil comes yeah. out. Yep. In the darkness. Yeah. Never. And it truly does not stop unless it can get one person to fall. Yeah. And we know there's billions of people in this world and one will fall. But as we've been talking about how much God is with us today, you know, the theme of our whole service is God is with us. He preserves us. He's guided us. He protects us. He helps us. Mm -hmm. This word today is talking about what we all need to be looking for in the days of hell. Because we can see the evil that speaks because it doesn't sleep. We can see people around us fall and we can recognize these things. And I'm sure Solomon was recognizing all these things around him. You know, he didn't avoid them because we know he himself fell. But he still came back to the Lord and he was able to tell us and share all those things with us. It says, for they eat the bread of wickedness and they drink the wine of violence. Amen. We see it. Every day, every day someone is speaking the bread of wickedness and drinking the wine of violence. It says, but the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter into a perfect day. Mm -hmm. This is us. We are the ones that follow the path of our Lord Jesus Christ. The way of the wicked is like darkness, and they do not know what makes them stumble. My son, Give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes.
Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are light to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. Amen. They are light. This wisdom and knowledge and understanding that God is showing us today. They are truly our light. They are words we do need to write in our hearts and in our minds and in our spirit. They are health for all our bones and flesh. Amen. To follow the Lord, to put our trust in him, to keep the faith. It says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put reverse lips far from you. Yet your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Amen. Mm -hmm. This is we, why we need wisdom and knowledge. Amen. Amen. And understanding. Because without these things, we, we, we will fall. We will stumble. But God has truly got us. He is truly with us. And he will bless us all. Be with us all. Protect us all. Amen. 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 Okay, let's look at the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of God. In Exodus 33, verses 5, 1 to 5. Exodus 31, verses 1 to 5. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by the name of Bazel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and knowledge and in all manners of workmanship. So who did this? God filled him with the spirit. Amen. This is not something they just had or they gave themselves or they worked for. Just like for us. God will truly fill us with all of these things, with the wisdom, understanding, and knowledge in all the things that we do and all the things he's called us to do. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Amen. It says to design artic, artistic works, to do the work in gold, in silver, and bronze, in cutting jewelry for settings, in carving wood, and to work in all manners of workmanship. You know, God has a work for each and every one of us. Amen? And if God has something for us, he's going to give us the wisdom and knowledge and understanding to do it, just like he did them. It's not about we have to go out and get all these things on our own. If God calls us to go out and do something, like in our workplaces, God calls us that we have to work. So he's going to give you the wisdom and knowledge at work to be able to get through the day. He's going to bless you with everything that you need. Amen to that. Amen. Amen. Okay. Wisdom is obedience to the Lord's command. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 to 8, it says, Surely I have taught your statutes and judgments, just as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should act according to them in the land which you go to possess. Therefore, be careful to observe them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of all the people who will hear all these statutes and sayings. 
Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Amen. For what great nation is there that the Lord, for what great nation is there that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? For, who, for whatever reason, we may call upon him. Amen. You know, I said this nation of ours does not call upon the Lord these days. Amen. People, us, as it says, we call upon the Lord all the time. Amen. But we see our nations is crumbling. Our world is falling apart. And everything is just chaotic and crazy. Truly, what is evil is called good, and what is good is called evil nowadays, without a doubt. But the Lord is going to take care of it all. He's going to equip each and every one of us to be able to help those who still walk in darkness, that he wants to bring to the light, that he wants to help. When they're ready, we will call upon him and he will answer. It says, in what great nation is there that has such statues and righteous judgments as are in all this law, which I set before you this day? You know, Moses, Moses had a tough time. You know, he really did. He had to, like, keep everybody in check, try to keep all the people organized. You know, he had, God sent him help. He gave him elders and judges to help him rule the people. But I know he still felt like everything fell on him. And God still gave him everything that he needs and anointed him to do all the things he had called him to do. You know, same happens for us. When God calls us to do something, we say, okay, sometimes we might resist, sometimes we don't want to do it. But I know that God is truly telling us, it's for our own good, it's for our own learning, it's for our own wisdom. We do things that give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding that God's called us to do by far. And we pass that on to others because we are blessed. We, sometimes we don't know how blessed we are, but I think God is showing us how blessed we really are and that we need to acknowledge how blessed we are. We are his chosen generation. And we do need his wisdom and knowledge and understanding to do his work by far. But praise the Lord. But there is heavenly and demonic wisdom and understanding. We know that the demonic, that Satan has his own wisdom, just like God. He has everything that the Lord has. Okay. Counterfeit, yes, yes. Well, I'm not saying it's good because it's not. <laughs> but, and the world pretty much follows what Satan does because they don't understand either. But we have to recognize that, you know, there is light and there is darkness by far. You know, there's always that the devil so much wants to be like God and in the place of the Lord that he has to have the same things that the Lord has, but it's all counterfeit, as we say. It's not, it's not true. It's not just. It's not of the Lord. Let's read James chapter 3, verses 13 to 18. It says, who is wise and understanding among you? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct, conduct 
that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Praise the Lord. In the humility of wisdom. This is how you can tell. You know, when you're out in the world and people is I, 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 and me, 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 and all of that, then you know that's not the wisdom of God. Amen. You know, that's the demonic wisdom of Satan. You know, when we when you don't see people doing good things and they're doing evil in the sight of the Lord, we know that that's not good wisdom. That's how you can tell. There's humility. When you see pride rising up, that's not humility. Amen. That is not meekness of wisdom. It says, but if you have bitter envy and self-seekings in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. Amen. This is the demonic wisdom and understanding. To have bitterness, self-seeking, boastful, and lying. Everything that's against the true words of God. We have to recognize these things. Sometimes they sound really good. And they sound right, you know. But we have to pray that God gives us wisdom and understanding and knowledge to be able to discern between the two. Because the, 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 the way people are deceived now is because the things that they hear, they sound really good and they sound right. So they're truly ready to follow those things or believe in those things. But it's all a lie. There's no truth in it. You know, if they just sat down and stopped looking at the internet and social media and actually pick up the Bible and read it and read the words of God, they can see what truth really is. They can truly find out what knowledge and understanding is all about. And they will know that they, they're not supposed to have bitterness and envy and self seekings in their heart. That those things are against God. God wants us to have love and mercy and grace, compassion and kindness, all the fruits of the Spirit. He wants us to have all of those things. But they contradict for what the flesh wants and what the world teaches. It says, this wisdom does not descend from above, but it's earthly, central, demonic. Amen. That's where it comes from. It says, for where self, for where envy and self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil things are there. We can see everything. It says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Praise the Lord for that. <clears throat> this is the wisdom that's from above. This is walking in God's love and in his spirit. To have these things in our hearts. And it's all about having it in our hearts. Praise the Lord. This is now the fruits of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Amen. The fruits of righteousness. The fruits of the spirit. So we truly know about walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. The fruits of the spirit. It's a constant battle every day. Walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. But we learn that wisdom teaches us when we start to almost walk in the flesh. Or, or things not so much walking in the spirit. That we can truly watch what we say and what we do and how we act. Because we know that that's not walking in the fruits of righteousness. Amen. 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 So we're going to listen to the wisest man of all, King Solomon, who asked for wisdom. First King chapter 3, verses 15 to 12. It says that Gibeon, the Lord, appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask. 
what shall I give you? This was a good dream. We should have these kind of dreams. I yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> you to compare to me in the night in the dream, okay? <laughs> Amen. Ask. And Solomon said, you have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth and righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him and you have given him a son to sit on the throne as it is this day. Now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father, David. But I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. David is just laying it all on the line. He says, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then the Lord said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have you asked for riches for yourself, nor have you asked for the life of your enemies, but you have asked for yourself understanding to, serve, to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has been none so that there has been none that there has not been anyone like you before you nor shall any like you arise after you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ask. Ask. You know, I think we're all in this whole situation. We don't know whether we're going out or coming in. We don't know which way to go and what to do. We need God's wisdom and understanding to be able to get through the days, the week, the hours of the day. We truly do. But just like in Solomon's dream, him and the Lord were having a wonderful conversation, it sounds like. And whatever, what everything that he was saying was pleasing to the Lord. Amen. It was. Amen. It was truly pleasing to God. Because what would we have asked for? We would have asked for more money, okay? We would ask for a bigger house. We would ask for a new car. Or we'd ask for, you know, quit our job. We would ask for, you know, other stuff, power and money and fame and all those things that people ask for. But Solomon was a child, just like we are God's children. And he just wanted to truly just, just be a good king. I think it just came down to that. He wanted to be a king like his father David. And he knew that he couldn't do it without God's help. That's the key to all of this. Because we see some kings in the Bible and how they they weren't so good. They stopped following the Lord and they stopped doing his will. They stopped listening to his voice. They started worshiping other idols and all those other things that, you know, brought them down and made them fall. But we all just want to be wise. I, I pray for wisdom all the time, you know, because I don't know what I'm doing. 
I truly need God's help every day. I need to understand. Sometimes God does something and says something or, you know, we don't understand. So we have to pray and ask him to help us understand. Amen. We do. Amen. I know I do all the time. Out my going out. I mean, I am a child, just like Solomon was saying. He was a child. We are all children when we look at it in the eyes of the Lord. We are all are children. We all need to understand. We all need for Him to give us this heart and to give us a wise heart and understanding that we can do what the Lord calls us to do. Then we need the faith and the strength to be able to do it. But we have to have the wise heart and understanding to be able to do what he wants us to do. Amen to that. Amen. We truly have to be willing. Our hearts have to be open. That's wisdom and knowledge right there. To have an open heart and a willing heart to do what God wants. Praise the Lord. Solomon did that. He knew that. David, his father, who had, was a man after God's own heart, understood that. You read the Psalms. We know that David went through a lot of stuff. But he also knows that David knew that this was all for his to make him wise and give him wisdom and give him understanding to go through those things. And I truly believe the things that we go through is to give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding. It's also to train us, too, in the way God wants us to do and helps us as we go through this. So when we see these things, we can recognize them and discern them. Or when we hear stuff that we know that's not from God, we recognize and understand it because we have the wisdom that he's given to us to be able to know that and see it. Because, like I said, some stuff, it sounds good enough to believe. You know, the rhetoric that people come out with People just say, okay, I can follow that. I'll do that. That sounds good to me. Let's do it. But the bottom line is, is it true? Is it real? Is it of God or is it not? That's where we need wisdom and understanding and knowledge for sure. Amen. So since we heard from the wisest man of them all, so let us hear from the wise King Solomon. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. It says, The Lord gives wisdom. From, the, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Amen. Wisdom comes from the Lord. Amen. Just like he asked for it, he knows. He knows he had that dream and God, and he asked for wisdom to rule his people, to be, have an understanding heart. He knows. He knows that his wisdom comes from the mouth, from his mouth, the Lord, come knowledge and understanding. In Proverbs 16, 16, it says, how much better to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. You know, wisdom is the principal thing. It's more valuable than gold and silver. It's the most valuable thing that God could give to each and every one of us. In Psalms 111, verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The fear of the Lord, the remnant of the Lord, understanding who the Lord is, that is the beginning of wisdom. For Proverbs 11, 2, it says, when pride comes, then comes shame, but with the humble is wisdom. Amen. There is no wisdom with the proud. Only shame. They do not understand. And those are other proverbs that Solomon said. They do not understand. 
They do not seek wisdom from the Lord, but their own way, their own understanding, their own knowledge. And that will bring them to shame and that will cause them to fall. But with the humble, with the children of the Lord, there is wisdom. In Proverbs 24, verse 14, it says, so, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be in your soul, be to your soul. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be to your soul. If you have found it, you have a prospect and your hope will not be cut off. Amen. Let's get to the conclusion. You know, this word is telling us about, I think it's truly preparing us for things to come. The things we will see and things we will hear. Who you will follow, you know. I know God, no one can pluck us out of God's hand, amen. He can truly whip us. He gives us his perspective of things, his word as we truly come before him every day. And we give thanks to that. You know, I'm so thankful that we are the chosen, that he's given us all this family to take care of each other and guide each other, help each other, lead each other. Amen to that. Because if not, we would all be lost. But we're not lost anymore. We're in the light. So we thank God for all, all the wisdom, all the knowledge, and the understanding that he gives to each and every one of us. And I pray that he continues to give us even more because we're going to need it in the days to come. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's do Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 to 17. This is the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. It says, to know wisdom and, and to know wisdom and instructions, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instructions of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young men and women, knowledge and discretion, a wise man and woman hears and increases learning, and a man and woman of understanding will obtain wise counsel. To understand a proverb is an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and understanding. Amen. You know, sometimes there's stuff in the Bible that's like riddles and, and stuff we, we don't understand, but I think God puts those things there so we go deeper into the Word and that we try and understand it and try to figure it out and do a little work into to being able to understand it. You know, not everything is clear cut, but, you know, we, we, we do. We do that. We find out if we don't understand, we look it up. We talk about it. And I think God is truly pleased with us because we do fear him. And that is the beginning of knowledge. The world, the world doesn't care. They despise wisdom. They have their own wisdom. They have their own knowledge. They have their own understanding. And we see that. We don't agree with it, but we definitely can see it. And um, we pray for them. We pray that they, God open their eyes and draw them closer to him because they need it. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, it says, See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Amen. 
Our days now are evil. We are living in the days of Noah, you know, in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's just violence and evil and all kinds of things constantly and continuously. It's in all our faces all the time and, you know, but the word tells us to stay away from those things, avoid it. Cling to what is good, our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Recognize it, but don't go near it. Jesus told the disciples, look, see what they do, but don't do what they do. That's all for all of us as well. Recognize that these things are happening, but don't be a party to it. There's wisdom into seeing and knowing, but there's not wisdom in doing it and being a part of it. That's the understanding that God wants us all to know. And as our days get more evil and more violent, we have to stay strong in the Lord. Amen. We truly do. First Chronicles chapter 22, verses 12 and 13. It says, May the Lord God give you wisdom and understanding, each and every one of you. May he give you all wisdom and understanding and give you charge concerning Israel that you may keep the law of the Lord your God. Then you will prosper if you take care to the full, if you take care to the fullest, full, fulfill, uh, if you take care to fulfill the statutes and judgments with which the Lord charged Moses concerning Israel. Be strong, be of good courage. Do not fear or be dismayed. Amen. 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 <laughs> Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you that you uh, put it in my heart that this is the word you wanted for your people to hear. Uh, thank you to help me give this word. And I just pray you do write these words in the tablets of our hearts. Help us to just seek your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, just like Solomon. The word says, ask, and it will be given to you. And if we seek you, we will find it. And if we knock, you will open the doors. So I ask that you continue to bless everyone here with this word today, those that hear this word in the future, and just uh, bring us closer to you and bless us all today. We give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his confidence upon you and give you all peace today. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.